Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. Well, I am certainly so excited about today. I am thankful for God's goodness. I'm thankful for His kindness and His faithfulness in my life and, the, and in the life of my family. I do give honor and glory to my Heavenly Father. Well, I have a topic today. It is somewhat sensitive. The topic is healing for the wounded heart. Are you wounded in your heart today? Are you doing everything possible to experience the healing power of God in your life? You know, at some point in our life, we all experience deep hurt. We experience rejection. We experience some type of, uh, of abuse in our lives, whether it is physical, verbal, whatever it may be. Now. Some of the signs and warnings and symptoms of a wounded heart that needs healing are the classic example is deep pain in the heart or when a memory still feels sad painful terrifying that memory has not been healed your heart has not been healed that is a sign or when a memory is tucked away in the crevices of your heart and you refuse to deal with that wound and you allow it to just remain there. Another uh, sign of warning is you're easily offended. If you're easily hurt and become defensive when someone tries to correct or speak with you, that is a warning sign that your heart needs to be healed. Our rejection from childhood, adulthood, generational rejection from the womb, a bloodline, and have not been confronted with or dealt with. If you have experienced any type of abuse, such as verbal, physical abuse, incest, molestation, sexual abuse, any kind of trauma, experience, you have experience incarceration, generational inheritances that are curses operating in your life, you need healing concerning those deep wounds. Now, the good news is that Jesus Christ, our wonderful Savior, have paid the price for us to experience the healing power for each in every wound, every experience, bad experience that we've had in our lives, Jesus has paid the price for us to experience a healing power. In Isaiah chapter 53, uh, verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement, needful to attain peace and well-being, for us was upon him, and with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Isn't that good news? I am so thankful for what Jesus Christ, this was prophesied even before Jesus Christ came, that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. I am so thankful for what Jesus Christ has done for each one of us. He paid the price not only for physical healing, but he has paid the price for, for us to be sound in mind. He paid the price so that we can be uh, walking with stability throughout our life. The word wounded is a very important word. Dr. Young said that the Hebrew word means pierce through and there accompanies this thought usually that of a piercing through unto death the hebrew word means pierced through perforated that word also appears in zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 it says they shall look upon me whom they have pierced it says also and then the text says he was bruised for our iniquities. The Hebrew word for bruised means crushed. The crushing and bruising of Christ began in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
the night before he was crucified, when Jesus was in agony and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And another part of the scripture says that Jesus was crushed under the weight of our sin. So a few hours later, Christ was bruised and crushed by his beatings and the scourgings he received directly before he was nailed to the cross and then pierced with a spear. But the deeper meaning of crushing is that it speaks to the load of our sins placed on him. The Apostle Peter says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that is first peter 2 24 and the scripture in isaiah 53 as i stated earlier says but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him i am so thankful that jesus was willing to take all the sins, the iniquities, the beatings that was rightfully ours. I'm so thankful because now in exchange, Christ have given us the opportunity. He has opened the way for us to experience a relationship with him, for us to experience the healing power in our soul, in our physical body, Christ have made great provision for us and it's up to us to make uh, use of that provision that Christ have uh, uh, paid for us. And uh, Psalms chapter 47, 3 says, He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. If you have a broken heart today, today is the day that you want to choose, that you want to give your heart, your broken heart over to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to begin the healing process. It is in our brokenness that God uses this opportunity to begin to draw us unto himself. And I can remember um, as a young girl, I was still in undergrad school I broke off a relationship and that was the, the beginning of the Holy Spirit just beginning to woo me because he knew that my heart was broken and, and this was a good opportunity for him to just woo me unto the Father. And so I took advantage of that opportunity without realizing that the Holy Spirit was really working on my heart and on my soul. And, and the Holy Spirit just began to draw me into a relationship with the Father. And that's when I surrendered my life over to Jesus Christ. And he healed my broken heart. You know, a lot of times uh, we have relationships and we think, you know, I can't be without that person. But the most important relationship that we should be thinking about is having a relationship with our Heavenly Father coming to him and surrendering our lives unto him. That is the most beautiful relationship that we can have in our lives. So I want to share a testimony. I was a person that was deeply wounded with rejection for many years, even as a young girl. But I did not know that I was wounded spiritually. I had generational wounds of fear and rejection. And it was further compounded uh, as a young child and adult through physical abuse. Although it was not until in my early 40s that I, that I experienced the delivering and the healing power of God at an encounter retreat. My eyes were open to see the extent of my fears. And now God was progressively working on eradicating fear from my life eradicating rejection from my life as I surrender and submit it to him. God progressively and he progressively continues to work on my heart. I didn't like social gatherings due to the due to the fear of rejection that was deeply in my heart. 
I didn't have confidence that I was loved, that I was valuable. But God released healing and he released deliverance in those deep wounds. And he began to give me a new identity that I am very much loved. I am very much accepted. And so when we can see our, that our identity is rooted in Jesus Christ, then we can begin to relate with others in a proper manner. So each day, God began to work in my heart and he brought me out of timidity and the resistance to social gatherings. Uh, each day, I make it a choice to love God and to love people. So life is so much better when I uh, chose to forgive and to seek healing, to move forward in God's purpose and calling for my life. And so I would like for you to be able to make that choice also. You can make that choice today and begin to seek the healing power of God in your life for your hurts and for your wounds and for your disappointment. So the scripture that the Lord placed in my heart for you today says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will, re but will rejoice over you with singing. And so I pray for you today that God will touch your heart and bring you to that place that you're willing to surrender and submit that he may begin the healing process in your life today. Be blessed and have a wonderful day.